It's not, not that I'm a technophobe, but I, I have a jet lag, so it takes me about three times as, as much to do the things that I usually do. And therefore, my lecture will last now 45 minutes. <laughs> and, that's, <laughs> and that's how we will end the day. Well, uh, I, I changed the title of my presentation in, in the meantime. <clears throat> As modeling the time structure of production, it's an offshoot of uh, uh, a current uh, writing project in which I'm engaged, which uh, concerns uh, revision of uh, capital theory. And uh, one of the elements that seem to me important is uh, the representation, the graphical representation of the uh, time structure of production. Uh, in order to explain the problem uh, in various ways, and I will, I will start from um, uh, the point of view of a recent paper that I published in 2008, namely the uh, demand for present goods, uh, the relationship between the demand of, of present goods and the time market. And then in the light of these considerations, we'll uh, talk about uh, a typical Austrian uh, illustrations of the time uh, market, namely uh, triangles, which is the, uh, the main one, Hayeki and triangles, or Jevonsian triangles, and then trapezoids, which uh, uh, have been introduced by Mary Rothbard. Uh, then we'll turn to a, the proper interpretation of what I consider to be the proper interpretation of triangles, and uh, then turn, lastly, to the advantages of trapezoids. <laughs> so, rather than modeling the time structure of production, my talk would have been the case for trapezoids. So this is work in progress. So this, uh, I've published uh, so far two papers on this. Uh, the first one is the time preference and investment expenditure in uh, Procesos de Mercado three years ago. Then two years ago, the demand for money in the time structure of production. And then this paper, uh, the time structure of production reconsidered, which is uh, uh, on my, my website. So for those of you who are interested in having a look at this, it does not consider by present, uh, con uh, contain my present presentation. Okay, so let's start with uh, the relationship between the demand for present goods and the time market. Uh, in um, the traditional uh, Austrian uh, literature, we have uh, the most detailed discussion in Murray Rothbard's Man, Economy, and State. And here, Rothbard uh, gives us a, an analysis of the factors determining the demand for present goods. Uh, first of all, a uh, definition. So the uh, present goods are goods that are uh, can be used uh, immediately, that is, do not uh, require any further transformation, which distinguishes them from future goods, which do require further transformation in order to be turned into final uh, goods that can be finally used, so consumer goods in particular, and uh, tools. Uh, and then Rothbard answers uh, two questions, namely, uh, what determines the demand for present goods? And he gives the answer, the, the ultimate factor determining this demand is uh, time preference. So one particularity of, of Rothbard's uh, theory is not particular as compared to previous authors such as Mises or, or Feta is that both sides of what he calls the time market, that is the, the market for monetary capital, uh, are determined exclusively by time preference, both the supply and the demand for present goods. Uh, who demands present goods? So uh, we have uh, three, uh, four major groups. Uh, the owners of... Uh, uh, original factors of production, that is, uh, laborers, uh, the owners of uh, raw materials. Third, we have the uh, owners of produced factors of production, that is, intermediate goods, uh, tools, capital goods, and so on. And fourth, uh, we have um, people, uh, consumers, who want to obtain consumer credit. And so these are the four main groups who ask for present goods. So... Based on this theory, we can easily derive uh, an explanation of the changes of the demand for present goods. And these changes must result if one of uh, those uh, factors that uh, determine the demand for present goods, uh, that uh, uh, among the, the, the typical groups, change. So we have here, in particular, changes in time preference, which can express itself in a greater willingness to work. Uh, we have the discoveries of new raw materials and immigration, so new original factors or additional quantities of original factors of production become available, and we have new to technology. Right? And that is simply because uh, Rothbard was reasoning, so the equilibrium on the time market is being derived in a framework of general equilibrium, or otherwise said in an evenly rotating economy, and such an evenly rotating economy is constructed under the hypothesis that 
or factor endowments do not change, consumer preferences and also time preference does not change, and thirdly, that technology does not change. So if one of those things changes, then we can get a variation in the demand for present goods. So how does this uh, look then on the uh, time market? And here then my uh, contribution in this 2008 paper was to show that the uh, consequence is different from the one that is typically envisioned, envisioned in the uh, Austrian literature. Namely, a general rise of time preference uh, uh, brings about uh, an increase of the demand for money and a simultaneous uh, reduction in the supply of uh, uh, present goods. Uh, so we, when we get an, uh, now the inverse case, right? We have here. You see oh, why does the red dot disappear? I'll press on this. Yeah. So, so this is this is the old equilibrium here. And this is the new equilibrium. So of course we can read it also the other way around. Then we get the typical Austrian scenario. Let's suppose that this is the new equilibrium, uh, the old equilibrium. And then from there we get an uh, increased supply of uh, present goods. So the supply curve shifts from here to here to as one. Uh, then we would get a new equilibrium uh, at uh, at this point, right? So, but this would not represent a general uh, decrease in time preference, but it would uh, only represent an increase of the supply of present goods, while the demand for present goods uh, stays the same. And that is, we suppose here implicitly that the reduction of time preference concerns only the suppliers of present goods, not the demanders of present goods, which is not a general rise of time preference, a general decrease of time preference. So if we get a general decrease of time preference, we move from this equilibrium to this one and the other way around. If the time preference generally decreases, we move from here to this point here. Oh, I'm trembling. It's time that I get a drink or something. <laughs> And then we can consider various other uh, circumstances. So I just give you one example, one other example here: a simultaneous increase of the supply uh, of uh, present goods and uh, of the demand for present goods. And then the equilibrium uh, shifts uh, out from from this point to this point. So we get a, a higher exchange, a higher volume of uh, gross savings on the time market being exchanged at by and large the same interest rate. So there's no systematic impact on the on the interest rate. Now, of course, demand and supply do not necessarily have to uh, change in the same direction, and this of, uh, implies a very important uh, implication, namely that on the time market, any combination of changes is possible. Right? That is, we do not only have uh, the combination that we have typically, that we typically underline in uh, Austrian reasoning, in Austrian uh, literature, namely a higher savings rate and a lower pure rate of interest, but we get also a higher savings rate and a higher pure rate of interest or higher savings rate at a constant pure rate of interest or a higher and a lower pure rate of interest at a constant savings rate. I will focus later on, in particular, on this case here, the higher savings rate and, and a higher pure rate of interest. Now, uh, from here, then, my, the, the problem of my uh, 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 present talk is then how do we translate this into a graphical representation of the time structure of production. And the usual, uh, the, convent, uh, the, the most commonly used graphical representation is the triangular representation according to Jevons and Hayek. So Jevons in uh, 1871 and then Hayek in his uh, Prices of Production 1933 introduces and most, uh, virtually all other Austrian authors uh, have used the triangular uh, form as well. And so what we see here is that uh, at some point, uh, this, this needs to be read from left to right, it, uh, the production pr process starts at some uh, point of time removed from final consumption, which is here, and then produces first intermediate goods, and then finally, so intermediate goods are transformed, in, increase in monetary value, and finally are transformed into consumer goods, which are sold at, at this uh, exchange value, this uh, uh, payment. Now, in Rothbard, uh, we get a, uh, to find a trapezoid representation of the time structure, which is uh, therefore somewhat different. We see, of course, the, uh, in the trapezoid form, we, um, this line which re represents the uh, progressing exchange value of the intermediate goods and of the final goods uh, does not cross uh, the abscess. Right, so we get uh, uh, it's the, the structure of production starts at uh, some some positive value which is not zero, 
And this is significant and important and helpful, especially. So the point is now to explain why this is helpful. And in order to do this, we'll first have a look um, at, uh, well, first of all, to show that uh, the traditional scenario can be illustrated with both uh, representations. Right? Uh, the uh, adjustment of the structure of production in the tradition Hayekian scheme works like this. So we start off uh, with this structure of production here in blue. And then we get on the time market an increase of the supply of present goods at a constant demand, which entails uh, a greater volume exchange, so greater uh, uh, savings rate, uh, at a lower price, that is, at a lower interest rate. Now, this uh, entails, therefore, because the savings rate increases, the final consumer expenditure diminishes, and because the uh, interest rate diminishes, the curve becomes flatter. Right? So this is the traditional... Uh, way of illustrating this, and we can do the same thing with uh, Rothbard's trapezoid diagram, right? We start here from the curve A, from the, yeah, and then uh, on the time market, there's an increased supply of present goods, so the curve becomes flatter, and the st uh, structure becomes longer. Now, if we turn to uh, another case, we will see that we... Um, uh, the case that we discuss, uh, uh, discussed before, namely higher savings rate and a higher interest rate, so we suppose here that the supply of present goods uh, remains the same, but there's an increase of the demand for present goods for whatever reason, for one of the changes that we considered before. And we ask ourselves, how can this be represented, uh, or the, the corresponding changes in the time structure, how can the, these be represented uh, graphically? Well, the answer is they cannot be represented graphically with a, a traditional triangle. And the reason is that uh, for, uh, in, a, in a triangle, uh, the, the curve would have to become steeper, and at the same time, the volume uh, that is under the curve would have to become bigger. Now, that's not possible because the, the curve is hitting the uh, abscess. So if the curve becomes steeper and starts at the same point, or even at a lower point because the savings rate increases, then the volume under the uh, curve of the surface under the curve becomes smaller, so the savings rate would have to necessarily diminish. So this con uh, constellation that we find here on the time market, increasing a pure interest rate and a higher savings volume, could not be represented with a triangle. But it can be I illustrated with a trapezoid. So we have one first advantage. And what we see here is the following. Right? The, the savings rate increases, so consumer expenditure diminishes, and the curve becomes steeper, so you see they, they move out from one another, and the, the volume under this curve is, well, here it's not very beautifully, but you can construct such cases more and more clearly in which the volume under this curve, the surface under this curve, is bigger than the uh, surface under the blue curve. So what then is the proper interpretation of triangles? What are the, uh, the premises that we have to make? The first one is we have unchanging monetary conditions and in an evenly rotating economy. The question is, do we have any money at all? In an evenly rotating economy is a different question, so I assume we have unchanging monetary conditions. And then in the evenly rotating economy, we have these three aforementioned uh, premises, conditions, that we, that we find also in the Austrian literature. Uh, Rothbard stresses that we always assume unit services, otherwise we couldn't get a progression of uh, value across time. Uh, but then, and these are the two additional premises that I wish to stress now, there are in fact no purchases of factors of production. And all the, the product here that matures from intermediate products into a final good is only sold from one capitalist to another. That is, there's never any sale of a factor of production from the owner of an original factor to a capitalist. Otherwise said, all owners of original factors of production are capitalists. Okay. All capitalists use factors of production that they own themselves. For example, their, prop their own labor uh, and their own uh, raw materials. These are never purchased. Okay. Translated in other terms, the typical Hayekian uh, triangle representation of a time structure of production corresponds to an economy exclusively composed of producer cooperatives. <coughs> Comrades, welcome. And the, the last point is that we can only illustrate primitive structures. Now, uh, by a primitive structure, I mean a structure of production that always starts without capital goods. That is, 
the value of the, the uh, original factor is always zero at the beginning or, or close to zero at the beginning. There is no use of capital goods in the highest stage of production. And this, of course, corresponds to the case discussed in Rothbard's uh, textbook, which starts off with, with a, uh, the example of a primitive uh, crucial type uh, economy, but it does not correspond to the conditions that we find in a modern economy in which even those stages of production furthest removed from uh, the production of final consumer goods operate with uh, capital goods produced in later stages. So this would be an advanced economy. So we have two, these two. Uh, so it makes that the, the triangular uh, representation is not wrong, but it corresponds to a very specific set of, of conditions that are not representative of our present day conditions. So what about trapezoids? Here we uh, have to uh, use the first three premises as well, but trapezoids give us the advantage that we can do without the last two premises. That is, we can here assume that there are purchases of factors of production, namely the factors of productions are purchased here. Here are, we have the purchase initially of, for example, original factors of production. And fifth, we can uh, also represent advanced structures uh, by assuming, uh, by, by introducing one additional uh, element, namely that we have an, a reinterpretation of the structure. The structure needs to be interpreted as a forward-looking tool, not as a bad, backward-looking tool. This is important. And that is, we, you see here on the abscess, I put length of structure of, the, of production in terms of planned numbers of stages. So we are looking from the point of, of time at which we are finding ourselves right now. And from this point of time, of course, all producers' goods that have been produced in the past and all intermediate goods are like original factors of production. They are there. So they can be interpreted exactly as original factors of production. So we get this type of structure. So uh, this, uh, uh, this case that we have here, so I put here in blue, this, this surface in blue corresponds to the savings volume. Uh, this uh, structure here corresponds to a case in which all factors that are being bought are bought only in the last stage of production, which is not the case in empirical practice, but this is useful for uh, illustrative purposes. Right? If you read my paper, you'll see I, I use this a lot because it simplifies uh, numer numerical illustrations. And it can be changed very easily by uh, uh, adjusting the trapezoid representation with the case in which factors of, uh, are purchased at each stage, and then it would look something like this. So you see here, we have the same interest rate at each stage, right? this and this, and then at each stage we have this capital, or these capitalists operating in this stage here, they buy original factors of production here in this volume, and because it's forward-looking, they also buy produce factors of production, and they buy uh, produce factors of production from owners uh, of the, the businesses in the uh, stage before, right? So we have a great flexibility here. And uh, so uh, this gives us the following conclusions, uh, namely th uh, three main conclusions. The conventional uh, triangular illustration is, uh, is suitable, but suitable only for a very limited uh, set of circumstances. And these are defined by uh, the prevalence of co uh, producer cooperatives and uh, primitive structures of production. Whereas uh, trapezoids can be used to illustrate all possible changes on the time market and are therefore a more flexible tool uh, to represent changes on the time market and on the, the time structure of production. Thank you for your attention. Thank you.